Hi everybody, we all know the market's been really heated. I've been really busy placing lots of business. Let me tell you about the type of deals that I've been working on. Live cases, these are from first time buyers looking at high loan to value. Buy to let investors, uh, whether in the south or in the midlands or up north. Um, property developers, development finance, so people buying property, bridging finance, uh, converting it into maybe HMOs and so forth. So a few, few deals like that. Right to buy, buying your council homes. Multiple people buying together, whether it was family members or friends. Um, adverse credit rules. There's been a lot of changes around that because of the pandemic. So there's lots and lots of stuff here. What I've done is I've put it into a key as well. So if you're interested in first time buyer stuff, you can just click on it. If you're interested in, I don't know, adverse credit, you can click on it or buy to let investors. So uh, I'll catch you on the video. Hopefully you enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've seen the like and subscribe button come down simply because I haven't been posting. I don't think I've posted a video for a couple of weeks. So like, subscribe, support the channel, and I will continue to do this more. Thanks. Hi everybody, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. It's been a long time. I think it's been about a couple of weeks since I actually posted the video. Um, why is that? Because I've actually got a day job. My day job is I'm a broker, uh, and so I'm not a YouTuber. I actually, uh, although I've got some YouTube videos, I actually make a living by doing mortgages, by what I talk about, really. Um, so we've been very, very busy at the moment, just trying to concentrate on the deals that we're doing. Um, I thought I'll just sort of give you an update of what's happening in the market and what I'm finding with a lot of our clients. There's a lot of chopping and changing, obviously with the stamp duty deadlines. There's a lot of people rushing in trying to buy. Um, there's a lot of people that have got stuck. Down valuations are happening because, um, believe it or not, people that are um, looking to sell, um, they've taken advantage of the market. So maybe they've put their prices up a little bit too much. And obviously the lenders are going in there, the surveyors are going in there and saying, well, instead of a £500,000 property, it's actually worth four hundred and eighty. And then there's negotiations because you're then telling the client, go and have a word with the, with the vendors. The vendors don't want to sort of sell at that price. They've got to come up with some sort of arrangement. So sometimes the buyer said, no, I'm just going to buy it. I'll come up with a shortfall deposit. Sometimes they're meeting halfway. So there's a lot of that going on. So deals that were supposed to take place and they were going to be you know, straightforward deals, they're taking longer and longer. A um, lot of down valuations. Uh, that's, the, that's the big one. That's the point that's happening right now because of the market, because it's heated, because the vendors are thinking, well, I might as well, you know, I might as well try my luck and see what I can get. And that works because the buyers generally want to buy the property. The problem is, is the surveyors saying, no, 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 this property is not worth what it's worth. And when it comes to, uh, so that's on purchases, and that's quite unusual. Um, generally on purchases, you don't get that many down valuations. What you do get is a lot of remortgages, okay, that get down valued because always people think their property is worth more than what it's actually worth or quite a lot of the times because you know they've done their work and they've got new, you know i've got a new kitchen in there or i've got a new bathroom in there well sometimes it does affect prices but you know a new door i had one last week uh oh, i've put a new door in there i was like well i'm not sure that's going to affect the the property price so much um so yeah a lot of that happening a lot of high loan to value lending obviously people are trying to stretch themselves high loan to value lending I tell you what I'm finding, that mortgage guarantee scheme is a bit crap. <laughs> I don't really like it. Um, there are lots of 95% mortgages out there now that are not on the mortgage guarantee scheme. Now, the mortgage guarantee scheme, one of the uh, pitfalls of it is, or one of the downsides of it is, you can't own any other properties. Okay, so uh, you can't have owned another property uh, or you can't have another property. So, um, yeah, so we've got lenders that will do 90, 95 percent, 90 or 95 percent. And they don't have that rule. Now, I tell you a little trick. I've had a series of these. I would say I probably had about five of these in the last week and a half, two weeks. Clients own a property. They own a residential property. Guess what? They want to they want to keep that property. Okay, so let's say they've got. Um, 80% loan to value on that residential property that they've got right now, okay, or 75% or they've got some equity in it. But what they want to do is they want to keep that and then they want to buy another one, but they don't have a lot of deposits. So they, they, they're coming to us and saying, can you get me a 90% deal? So on the onward purchase. 
And I did a lot of research on this and it's quite interesting because what happens is a lot of the lenders will say, yeah, you can do it. We offer 90% mortgages. We'll even allow you to have a let to buy. We'll allow you to have a property in the background. They're okay with that. However, because it's a new let to buy, because you're going to, you're going to turn that into a buy to let essentially, we're going to use that as an affordability. So it doesn't really work because they, they're saying we're going to, we're going to take into account both mortgages for affordability because you haven't proven that you've rented this property out. Now, I have found a couple of lenders that don't do this, okay? So that's where our niche, that's where I've come from, that's what I'm trying to do for these clients and the applications are going through and let's hope uh, it works out. Um, so a lot of the lenders, what they're saying is, yeah, we'll allow you to do that, but we'll just take everything on, the, we'll take both mortgages for your affordability. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, then we, we can't do it. So we've got a few lenders that will allow you and they'll just say, look, if it's washing itself off, the buy to let is, is paying itself by the rent. As long as it fits, uh, the, fits the rental criteria, we're happy with that and we're going to discount that. So quite a few deals like that happening. Quite a, quite a few family members buying together. More and more people, as property prices get more expensive, are buying together. Now, that could be a combination of family or friends, um, which is all right, but it's a lot of work. So it's like three people, four people's application work, three people's, four people's bank statements, uh, you know, pay slips, credit reports, okay? Because a few times, you know, one person has had, I don't know, an issue with their credit file and that screws the whole deal up. So three of them might be fine. And it's very difficult because most of these people don't start having conversations about their credit profile. Oh, did you miss a credit card payment three months ago or eight months ago? Even even if they, often they don't know. Even if they do know, they just think, oh, well, I'll just put it through, it'll be okay. Because the rest of them don't know about it. So if you are going for an application and there's a multiple of you, you need to have that dialogue, you need to have that discussion, you need to give your credit reports up front, We need because we've been caught on this a few times. But a lot of transactions happening on that. What I would say with those type of transactions is horrendous when, when things fall out of bed. So if it's friends and then they want to part ways and they've got this mortgage on their head. So think about the future don't think about right now oh what a lovely place and i can't afford it myself so why don't i go and buy it with james okay however what happens if james wants to go and get married what happens if james wants to you know move jobs and doesn't you know doesn't want to live here anymore and wants to buy another property all of those things and and then obviously it gets more complicated when there's when there's um uh, family members because you know they may want to go separate ways and they've got this mortgage on their heads and that will have an impact on their future so don't just think about right now don't think about doability yes we can do it it's about what's going to happen in the future and most people don't think about things like this they think about the right now and can you get me a mortgage and speak to them yeah you can but these are the things that you need to be aware of so a lot of that lots of buy to let I would say 50% of it is buy to let right now. A lot of it around the Midlands, a lot of it up north, a lot of a lower lower property values between the 100 to 200,000 uh, pounds. For me, that's lower because we're based in the south. However, we're doing more and more, a lot more up there, simply because you get greater yet rental yields. You can do more. A lot of developments, conversions, buying a property for three bed, turning it into a five bed, pulling your money out. A lot of that stuff's happening at the moment. And it's got its, it's, got its pitfalls, you know. Um, but... It, it, you know, we're doing a lot more of that. Down south, very difficult to get, um, to make money really on, on from buy to lets unless you're doing something to it. Um, your average flat, you know, the rental calculation doesn't fit unless you are keeping it long term and you've got a good strategy from your tax perspective. Um, a lot of those deals what I'm doing is just refinancing and keeping portfolios going and things like that. Um, there are, a, you know, or a lot of people turning their existing not selling their existing and then obviously looking to um, buy on so a lot of that happening got a few um uh, bridging and development deals going on now that could be ground up developments also a lot more in terms of uh, buying a property getting some money to buy the property doing the property up and then refinancing it or selling it now that's quite interesting because you know my preference is always to the clients i say look you know if you've got the money to do up the property yourself, go down that route. Don't go with a lender that will 
say okay we'll give you this money you know we'll give you x amount of money like 65 percent 70 percent loan to value to buy it and then we'll give you some money to do up the work because it gets a bit messy because they have to send people around and they have to assess how much money you've spent what it's worth and it gets a bit murky especially on lower end properties like cheaper properties it just doesn't make sense i say you know try to fund the works yourself if you can um what else are we doing within some holiday let stuff um and more and more adverse now let's talk about adversity type of clients um obviously there's a there's a big market there um especially with the with the pandemic there's a lot of people that have had recent adverse issues um with adverse it's all to do with when did it when did it happen what have you done since what was it big difference between a missed mortgage payment and a missed mobile phone payment big difference between a county court judgment and i don't know a utility bill that was missed three months uh two years ago okay and how recent it is is very very important lenders i've noticed they've tightened things up in regards to certainly on secured so secure loans mortgages and stuff like that they've tightened their criteria up around that if you've had recent problems you probably have to wait um, but if it's unsecured stuff there are some flexible stuff so if it's a credit card if it was like a personal loan things like that um, you, I'm seeing a lot more utility bills for some reason. Loads of mobile phones and mobile phones. As guys, keep on, keep a record of where you're going to be with this mobile phone stuff. A lot more of that happening through. Um, yeah, loan to values have taken a drop. Right to the buys, a lot of right to buys. However, I've noticed in the last week or two, quite a few of the right to buy lenders that deal with adverse credit, okay, or specialist markets. So what I mean by that is one year's accounts or self-employed stuff. A lot of those guys. Have pulled out of the right to buy market i had a deal come to me yes day before yesterday um clients had some adverse um was doing the right to buy in london and i literally could not get them a deal uh, at a decent rate because two or three of the most prominent lenders that are specialist lenders they're not the high street lenders have pulled out of the right to buy so um a bit, bit tricky uh, hopefully this is just a um short term thing but that does tell me there is a problem there if they're withdrawing their right to buy products and it's a specialist product that's telling me either the book's not performing well so those loans they've given out is not performing well or they've got too much expo exposure because not enough lenders that you know that look after sort of one year's account self-employed net profits adverse credit things like that are looking at those type of transactions so yeah lots and lots of busy stuff happening as i said you know we are a live broker i'm not coming here to talk to you about fiction these are actual deals that we're doing lots of interaction with people funny enough yesterday i went back to a client and said i don't think i can do this deal for you 85 percent they've come back and said yeah i found the broker that could do it so let's see what what's going on because a lot of brokers a lot of things are saying to, things to people to pull their application in and maybe later on go back and go sorry we can't do 85 percent we have to do it at 80 percent there's a lot of that happening as well there's a lot of people sort of adjusting and trying to pull pull business in um, we've had some interesting comments on the on the thing so we've had some really good positive feedback i had one the other day which i laughed he said typical broker talks a lot but doesn't say a lot so uh yeah so you can get all sorts of, hey, this is the web so you're going to get lots of uh different types of uh comments so always worth checking out the comments like and comment obviously and uh, share these videos if you can and i'll catch you on the next one what i will do in the next couple of weeks is i'm going to start recording a more regularly now now i'm back i've taken a little break from the from the web and uh, hopefully i'll catch you on the next one take care the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.